uh, we said that chapter eight is the other side of the coin. We talked about traditional media, and we are going to be talking now about for the coming two chapters actually about new media, about digital marketing, digital media. This chapter is just an overview about digital marketing, some important things related to changes happening in this e in this area. What's the important thing we should be stressing on? And, uh, you know, like main strategies for digital marketing. And then chapter one, we're going to be talking about social media, which is another dimension of digital. That's very important nowadays. Uh, just to make sure you're properly aligned with where you should be. Now, uh, the situation uh, is that you have finished your marketing briefs. This week, you will be getting your budgets for your projects, inshallah. So you're going to know how much you ha have to spend on your actual media plan. The media plan you're going to be doing for your brand is for one month. Tamam? You're going to see how you're going to be spending this the amount of money I'm going to be giving you the budget for this month. That's the only constraint you have. After you finish your marketing briefs, the natural step after that is that you should have started already start sitting together and deciding on what will be your message strategy. What will be your message strategy for your campaign? Cognitive, uh, affective, or cognitive? If it's going to be cognitive, what kind? Effective, what kind? Cognitive, you know, it's just cognitive. And we said before, to choose, this is based on your conceptual map and on the main problems that you have risen or that you have يعني, come up with from your marketing brief and which is summarized in your conceptual map. So you have to look at it deeply and see which way you want to go throughout the campaign. Once you have decided what is your message strategy, you have to decide on what is your actual campaign message. What is it going to be? Like, for example, in Nike, it was dream crazier. Tamam? What is going to be your tagline for your campaign? And it should come from the identity of your brand, from the promise, from the presence, from the personality of your brand that you have written in your positioning statement in your marketing brief. So everything is integrated with the marketing brief. Marketing brief, you just finish it, throw it in the bin. No. You're going to be using it for the second part of your project. That's why I stressed on it and I met with you and we had meetings and I corrected for your mistakes. I told you, make sure you change the mistakes. I give you more time to work on it because it's important. <laughs> okay. Then after this, you're going to sit and write your objectives. Cognitive, effective, cognitive. Awareness or awareness, cognitive, effective, cognitive. Tamam? These objectives, you have to sit and write them. First, you decide what's your message strategy, then you write your objectives. Why? Because if you choose an effective message strategy, resonance, for example, it means that I will find the bulk of your objectives, effective objectives, right? Because you chose this strategy. If you chose conative, for example, that you said, oh, Dr. Olay, our problem is mainly about level of demand, about making people more attracted to buy the product, whatever. Okay, so you want the conative way, conative, conative campaign, no problem. So the bulk of your uh, some objectives will be cognitive objectives and so on. So this is why your choices are based on each other. And this is the same thing that happened to you in the exam. I told you don't go and solve question six and before question five, question four. You have to go in order, in sequence, so that you don't miss out anything. So first you choose your message strategy, the ma'am, and then you choose what's going to be your message, Aslan, your tagline. Okay. It's going to come from your positioning statement at the end of the day. And then you write down your objectives, and then, okay, after writing down your objectives, what's going to be my appeal or appeals that I can use? Okay, what are you going to choose for your campaign? And then, what will be your executional framework? What is it going to be? Fantasy, testimonials, like, for example, in Nike, they got some testimonials from the celebrities to talk about their ex experiences, their successes, and all that. Tamam? and so on and then your partners your sources your spokespersons your ambassadors influencers and who's going to be surrounding who's going to be supporting your campaign to be successful done that then you the final part which is your week by week actual plan what you will be tools what tools will you be using to communicate these objectives to cover all these objectives on four week period 
in a month. You have a month campaign. Week one, week two, week three, week four. If you check out previous projects for your colleagues, you will find that they have organized their campaign in four weeks, okay? Or four or three months or, or whatever. Yeah, but for you, it's going to be one month only, and yeah, four weeks. So, for example, week one, you're going to say, well, I doctor, this is going to be our awareness week, stressing more on mass media, on uh, reaching the biggest level of our consumers, trying to reach the 90% awareness that we su suggested in our objectives. You know? So what tools are you going to be using? You have to write details back in the, in the, in the media plan. Uh, opportunity to see auto OTS. Remember, we studied this in chapter seven. If you're going to be using uh, mass media, uh, what is going to be the CPM, cost per thousand, or cost per media? And so you have to start by putting these together. Then, after you finish your week by week, some creative samples. Oh, you did a TV ad. Nice. Where's the storyboard? Oh, you have a radio ad. Good. Where's the script? Oh, you said you're going to make an outdoor campaign in Qatar. Okay, which locations? What is the main yani, design or how is it going to look like or what the components of the ad and so on. For each tool you're going to be using, there is a creative uh, sample. These creative samples I'm going to put for you on Blackboard so you know for each tool what is, what is, is the creative samples expected for you. And then you're going to be putting the last thing which is the evaluation of my campaign. How are you going to be evaluating the success of your campaign? Taban, Evaluating your online digital tools that you will be choosing will be much easier than evaluating your offline ones, for sure. Because in online, how many likes, how many shares, how many follows, right? It's easier. Huh? Google Analytics, just go on Google and just check your landing page. Is it performing well? Is it performing bad? Is things going smoothly? Yes, no, it's much easier. And then, and then, after this, you are done. And you are going to be required to start preparing for your final presentations. And you're going to put together a three-minute video, which is a summary of your campaign. So this is, in a nutshell, sorry for we're taking all this time, but I think it's important but it's going to, for you to know what is expected from you for the coming weeks, inshallah, before we finish our course. Probably your uh, end-of-term presentations will be, of course, at college. They will not be online. I will try to make it at the university. Saraha, it's better for me and for you. Uh, it will be somewhere sometime uh, in April. Yeah? And I will see, inshallah, when we can do it. Yeah? But I will try to give you as much time as possible to finalize your projects. Tamam? I want to start chapter 8. Does anybody have any questions before I start chapter 8? Or yeah. continue chapter 8? Hmm? Tell me. Uh, what did Dr. Fred, just uh, yeah, yeah, just I have one question about uh, you said in the fourth, uh, like did I understand this right? On the fourth week, you said we wanted you wanted us to make the video and the presentation, but you said we have more time. I didn't. No, get, no, no, like, not, is, the, not the fourth week. What fourth week? No, what do you mean fourth week? You you said we have we have four weeks of for the presentation. So I thought each week was divided. So like the second is the story. No, no, the third. no, no, the, no, 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 no. You have the, the campaign will be four weeks. So, oh, so within these, uh, so we'll just be, like, we'll be making the, the present, uh, I mean, the, the campaign, well, and then we have a, and then we have a month to. No, no, I don't know when it's going to be your final presentation. They have to sit and calculate and see. It's going to be sometime, right. I think, next next month, and um, I think in the beginning of April or something like this. And I think you only have, when is your final exams? Does anybody know when the final exams start? I have no idea. They start from 17th of April. Ah, oh, really? That yes. early? I think they the shifted one week, one week before. They shifted a week earlier. Oh, this is the problem now. So we don't have time. So probably we will be having our uh, our uh, presentations in the sometime in the yani maximum maximum. It's going to be second week of April before the final exams. So basically, you only have one month. To go, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you have to run and move as fast as you can. That's why I'm trying also to finish the course material to to to, to give you more information and more information as much as I can. Okay, tamam. So I will let you know the exact time for the presentations, inshallah, very soon. And I will start putting everything on Blackboard this week. 
So you have all the material for the project, all the expectations, what's required from you, everything, everything, everything. And the budget as well. You get the budget this week, inshallah. I also put some support material uh, about the pricing of different media in Qatar. So you know the prices of different media in Qatar. So when you sit and put the campaign, you know how much is what exactly. Tamam? All this information I will provide it to you, inshallah, this week. So you don't, uh, yani, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that you are late because you're still working on your briefs until now. So get them just done and submit, and خلاص, finish. Okay, don't keep stuck in the brief. خلاص, just let it go. Start by thinking about your message strategy and writing down your objectives. What are you waiting for? And you have the past projects, you can always go back and have a look at them. Tamam? Okay, don't stop. Don't stop. Doctor, stop. I want to... I have uh, the link, the link you sent on the email, it does not work for us. Which link? The For the meeting, meeting recording. Why? It I says you. public access is disabled. The link, you go into the link and it's not working? No, it's not working. Okay, I will I will fix this, I'm sorry about that. Maybe there is uh, there is something with the, with the access or something. It's weird that it's not working. Let me um, let me check the access and I will let you know. Maybe sometimes they put uh, restrictions. Yeah, I need this. I will uh, wait. Uh, recording settings. Ah, okay. Alas, now it's okay. I put allow public access, so it's okay now. You can access it now. Sorry about that. Now it's okay, Muhammad. You can access it now. Sorry about that. Yeah, but I just okay. checked it. It is working. Yeah. Okay, thank you, doctor. Yeah, yeah no, no problem. So thank you for letting me know. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Let's move on and and um, quickly run into this chapter. Some things you're already familiar with. I'm going to show you some nice things today. What is digital marketing? We talked about it last time, but I just want to recap again, of course, that it is one component of marketing that just utilizes technology and the internet in general to uh, communicate and to promote uh, information about your brand, its image, its promise, its personality, and so on, to your target market. Yeah, and this is basically all, it's like normal conventional marketing, but in digital marketing, you are utilizing the internet and digital technologies to do that. That's the only difference, but it's basically the same. Just that the, the way you're doing it is different. You have strong presence offline. You're doing some things offline, like retaining your customers, making sure they're satisfied, trying to meet their expectations, trying to exceed their expectations, and trying to make them loyal, trying to increase your brand value. You have to do the same online. You're doing this offline perfectly. Tamam, bravo, great. You have to do the same online. Online, there's different set of tools. There's different set of tools. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, for example, when you come and you measure your brand value, or what? I have a very strong brand value. Great, offline. I'm number one, I'm number two. My value is X, my value is Y. Amen. When it comes to digital, okay, where are you? Search engine optimization, but where is your ranking? How are you ranked? When I search for your product category online, do you appear in the top or in the bottom? Where are you exactly? This bar shows me an indication of the strength of your brand online. So, the efforts and the, and the things that you've been doing offline, you have to do something similar online to have the same level of success. Tamam? Why are we doing that? Because you cannot now live without the online environment and the online universe. Halas, it's impossible. You cannot organize or you cannot plan for a digital for a campaign 2021 that doesn't include a big bulk of it to be digital, especially if you're targeting youth. It's not possible yet. And also, it's very important to include the mobile phone. Yeah, the mobile phone is key. And we will see this together now in the presentation. And we will even see some numbers of how important uh, mobiles and mobile apps are becoming. It's crazy how they're growing. Tamam? Okay, let's move on. Uh, just a, a small intro about the importance also of e-commerce, of buying and selling products online, whether it's B2C or B2B. The number one B2C platform now is Amazon. 
I got you some information to see how Amazon is working. This is the Amazon business model. You know, in 1994, Amazon started just selling books, basically. Okay, it was just a bookstore. And now look what Amazon is selling. It's basically selling everything. Yani, I think the next thing they're going to sell humans <laughs> on Amazon. Everything is being sold on Amazon now. Yani, many things, yani, things that don't even cross your mind, you'll find on Amazon. So look at this Amazon revenue streams from where it's coming. Look how it's look how it's coming. Look how it's coming. Just one second, boy. Sorry, some uh, noise in the in the house. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me well, or I'm not clear, or there's distortion or anything? No, I don't clear. Not it's clear. No, it's clear. <laughs> Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, sales, in terms of sales, as you can see, uh, in the U.S., of course, it's uh, number one. And then there's Japan, the rest of the world, Germany, U.K. Yeah, this is how yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, the sales of Amazon, how the revenues are increasing, uh, increasing rate. Look, uh, from 2015, 2019, I think if we even add the, the last two years specifically, you'll we'll find it even doubling, even, even more because of the corona and the, how people are uh, yani, becoming more, uh, look, yani, trying to buy online more than before because of the corona and because of the circumstances and they feel it's safer and it's easier for them to buy online. So I'm mean, this is a very successful, actually, uh, business model when it comes to e-commerce. Uh, this is a little bit old, but what I needed to know is to understand different terms when it comes to online uh, retail sales by digital channel. Yeah, and just understand some, some kinds of terminologies here. We have to differentiate between two very important things. Paid search versus organic search. What's the difference between them? Does anybody know or anybody have, have a hint about them or have heard about them before? Hmm. I would think Dr. Paid search is the idea that you advertise to, for people to like know about you and then to search about you. Organic search is just people by themselves, like through word of mouth or through whatever. They are like, uh, they know about you and search about you on their own. And they directly go to your site without having to go through a paid ad. That's the organic search. That's exactly like what Mohandas said. Paid search, I pay for an online ad somewhere on an online platform let it be a website let it be a social media account uh, social media sorry instagram youtube whatever there's an ad for my brand there the consumer clicks and he goes to my website or whatever this is paid or when i am doing seo search engine and when i'm uh, sorry using any kind of search engine looking for this product category you come in the top because you have paid to come on the top. You have paid on a Google Ads. You have, yeah, you know, done something that's paid to be there. Even usually when you are there and it's paid, it's written under it that it's a sponsored ad. So that the consumer knows that when you search for anything, the first things that come up for you are the sponsored ads. You know that, huh? And if you open Google now and search for basically anything, the first thing that will come up, up come up there is the sponsored ad, and then you move to the organic tamam so organic is the opposite and it comes naturally it doesn't have to cost nothing and uh, as muaz said just you it either comes that you are you directly go to the site you know it so you just directly go to it yeah? or you actually search for it online by name because you have heard about it so you are directly searching for it and this is the difference between organic and page of course any brand in the world is dreaming to move from paid to organic. Every time you are moving from paid to organic, you are building your brand. Every time a consumer is looking for you organically or naturally online, that means you are doing well with your brand. That means that the brand is building in the mind of the consumer. It's adding more value every day. If you are a new business and nobody knows anything about you, naturally you will start with what? With paid or with organic? You will rest more on which, yeah, or you will depend more on which? I will depend on paid, man. I will depend on paid, of course, because you still need people to know about you. Nobody knows anything about you. They will not go naturally and look for you. They don't know you. No awareness. But 
the more you are in the market known the brand starts to hang in the mind of the consumer so they start looking for you naturally and you start to appear and you start to move through the evoked sects in their minds like consumer behavior basically what we said in consumer behavior because also you're doing the efforts the proper efforts offline so it takes time but any successful brand wants to move from paid search to organic search a quick slide to show you the advantages of organic and the advantages also of paid search so you understand the difference between the two another important concept another important طبعا the organic is more credible the organic uh, but both have things in common they both deliver uh, impressive roi yes uh, uh, they both uh, accommodate yeah, or i say like support other marketing channels yes uh, yeah and they have some things in common but of course they are different in the way that they do things yeah, and paid is totally different as we said paid is that you're putting your ads on google ads on uh, uh, different platforms like strong sites here and top sites here in qatar yeah, uh, you know if you google uh, here um, uh, top sites top web sites in Qatar, for example, you'll find uh, the Alexa ranking, uh, the, what's the most yani, uh, yani reliable ranking that we depend on, the site for Alexa. And you will see, uh, let's have a look here to see what if I want to make a, a campaign. And now let's put a situation that you want to design a campaign and online. This is what you're supposed to do in your projects, right? Let's take an example and try to work on it and to understand what you should be, how you should be doing this. So you're saying, Dr. Yes, I have to, I, may, oh, I need to make some paid uh, online advertising. Where should I put my ad? Can you see this? Can you see all of you? These are the top websites in, uh, in, in Qatar. I will copy this link and put it for you also uh, yeah, for you in the, in the chat so you can uh, always go and have a look at it. You need it when you come to make media placing for your media. Uh, number one is Google. So when you open your new, when you start your campaign, or does it make sense that a brand does, is not linked to Google? You have to link it to Google. You have to make Google ads. You have to have presence on Google. It's very important, essential. It's the number one. Look, and they approximately, in the last three months, they spent the, uh, the approximate 16 minutes spent daily time spent on the site. In the past three months, 16 minutes, a lot of time. 60 minutes is a lot of time spent on Google. So you have to link your brand to Google. Total sites linking in, look how much, 1,300,000 uh, uh, sites uh, linked to this site. So you have to link yourself to the site as well. It's very important. Next comes YouTube. Next comes Yahoo. Next comes Facebook. Next comes uh, Doom, uh, Doom.net, which is uh, something similar to Google Analytics. It helps you make uh, proper uh, decisions about your online marketing mix and placing your ads and, and so on. So search engine, Wikipedia, Office, Amazon, Alive.com, Microsoft.com, Zoom.com. OK, the first actual website is Qatar Living in number 14. Can you all see it? It's clear. So if you are targeting expatriates here in Qatar, or you are targeting and in your target market it's not just Qataris, it includes all the Qatar society. Putting an ad in Qatar living is very important. Because it, it is the number one website, especially for non qataris in Qatar. It is our guide here really in Qatar for basically anything and everything. It includes anything and everything you want to talk about. Also they have very strong presence now on Instagram, on social media. Some people put their ads on Instagram with Qatar Living. It's not cheap, by the way. It's one of the expensive uh, advertising platforms in Qatar because it has very high traffic. And Netflix, right, and so on, and so on. Interesting to see the top sites here in Qatar in terms of traffic and usage and so on. So I will leave for you this so you can use it when you come to do your media placing to, to justify why you put ads on these different sites. Tamam? Let's move back. It's clear. Everything is clear for you. Tamam? It's okay? Yes, doctor. Say you want to put in, uh, make a campaign and you want to choose which sites to put on your ads. Okay? Here, you are going to think about many things. 
first of all, what is going to be your landing page for the campaign? Digital, you have to have a landing page, a hub, where you can monitor and evaluate your campaign results as they go on. Okay? Usually, 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 the landing page is the website of your brand, of the company, usually. But some people choose other things, like Instagram accounts, like Facebook accounts. Ideally, it should be the website. Some people also uh, evaluate websites wrongly. They say, I don't need a website. I have Instagram, I have Facebook. What do I, why do I, Instagram is, is basically doing the same thing. Why would I need a website? Actually, that's not right. Website is not just for website. Websites for a business provide also trust, credibility to the end user. Uh, it shows that you are uh, having uh, a strong business. It shows that it, it, it shows what we call visible identity or, or, or visual identity for your business. So it is important to have a website or a web page uh, for you. It doesn't have to be something very sophisticated. It can be something very simple, but it should be there. And the key also that it should be always updated. And the key for online and the big challenge for online is to be updated all the time. That's a big problem, by the way. Sometimes even you guys, when you, some of the drawbacks that you talk to me about your projects, remember, you told me, doctor, they have a website, but it's very old. They have the Instagram page, but the last post they did was, I don't know, from how many months. They have, this is weak, weak points of weakness, really, in their communication tools. Should be resolved. That's not proper. That's not correct. It gives a very bad message about your brand. Tamam? So if you are going to make an online campaign, you have to choose your landing page. What is a landing page, first of all? What does the land, this term mean, to choose your landing page? Which is, I said, usually is your website. Landing page is the hub or the page or the web page. It's going to be monitoring your online uh, uh, performance. Tamam? As you can see. It's uh, also known as the lead capture page or the single property page, static page, or a destination page. It appears in response to clicking on a search engine optimized search result, marketing promotion, marketing email, or an online address. This is where it takes you. Go ahead, uh, Doctor, don't you think um, websites are uh, old school? No, no, no. No, 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 no. From the UC, they, uh, like, they can say Instagram or Twitter are better for advertising uh, nowadays. No, uh, um, Abdullah, I'm not saying that you use the website for advertising. No. Mm -hmm. no. No, 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 no. No. Website is basically playing the role of an info and general page for your brand. It's part of your brand components. It's part of your brand components. It's part of your brand identity. When I mm -hmm. click on an ad in social media, where is it going to take me? It should take me somewhere on your website. I know, for example, I'm running a business here in Qatar. It's a related to sports, it's basketball. I have a campaign now running. I had a campaign actually, now it's not, but I had a campaign previously running for our third term for children and register and to play basketball and so on. So in the campaign, it was on Instagram and Facebook. You click on the app, what does it take us take you to the registration page on my website? And this was my landing page. How do I analyze it? Google Analytics. I will, do it. I will show you now. I will show you a live one now. I will actually show you how that's working now. Let me show you quickly. First of all, I just want to give you the example about the website. And if I have uh, about the landing page, sorry. And here, let's have a look. For example, let's see. Uh, okay. Say I'm going to... Here, as you can see, this is the website for what? For Qatar living. Alas, this is the number one uh, website in Qatar in terms of, you know, like a social website. Yeah. Okay. Who has an ad there on the top? Who you can see has an ad on the top? Can you see? Huh? Who has an ad? Ikea. 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 Oh, Ikea. Bro, great. Here. If I click here, it's going to take me to the landing page. The ad. It doesn't make sense to have an ad without a click. You know, why do you have it? What's the objective? You have to have the creative part in the ad. That's the creative component, you know, the action button, to go button, to do button, behavioral button. You have to have that in your campaign. Amen? How are you going to include all the six effects? 
So if I click here, it will take you to the landing page. You know which page it opened? Let me show you. Fortunately, this is very static, so it doesn't show on your. Uh, I'm just looking to close this and open for you the page that it opened actually. This is where it took me. This is exactly the focus piece with me. What I'm saying is extremely important, all of you. This is where it took me. Where did it take me? To their website to see the location of the store and to have information about the store because the sale is in the store. Clear? And this is what we call the landing page. What do I care about do to monitor this campaign? They have this landing page on Google Analytics. To check out for more people came, for more did they click, what are the characteristics, language, and so on. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Here, here, I'm gonna come. Let me show you Google Analytics for my company. Okay. It's not so impressive these days because once we have something running, yeah, but it shows some indication. This is a real data, not a fake one. Okay, here for example, for Fame Academy. Let me see, let us see. From where is the traffic? Can you all see it? Is it moving or? No, sorry, I'm missing it. because I have too many things open now. Okay, now let's move. Try for example to check here. Traffic, this is from 21st of February to 27th of February. I know it yesterday. Cool. On the 26th, nobody accessed our page. Nobody clicked, nobody came, nobody did anything. But the last, from 21st to 27th, some people came. On 21st, let's see what's happened on 21st. Actually, let me take you back to... Um, yeah. More and um, to get more. Uh, one second, okay. Yeah, let me check here. Right. Let us go back to the beginning of the channel to see maybe there was more traffic in the beginning of the term. Uh, Okay. Okay, that's more data, Yanni. Anyway, okay. Now here, what is this? this? Is this is first of all the source of traffic, Yanni? From where did the people come? Okay, so traffic. Look at the kinds of traffic here. From where they came? Direct. What's a direct one? That's the unpaid. What are the organic? That's an organic. You know what's direct? Direct that someone just went onto your site. They know us. They know us, so they went onto our site. So look at here. Direct. We have one. Any, it's it's pretty okay, Yanni. And then here, this is the dark. Dark one is direct, as you can see, huh? It's clear. So we have direct. That they just entered and they came to our site. And we see some dark, a lot of dark here. So it means that we are starting to build our brand. People are starting to access us directly. Amen. Get me. Next one. No, this is direct. It's unpaid. Organic. What's the organic one? When they are searching for, uh, uh, when they are searching for. Uh, 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 basketball academies in Qatar, we appear in the search engine optimization. And we are there. So they just found us and they came. So they came to us through SEO directly. And this is, doesn't cost anything. It's for free. That's organic search. You understand or no? Guys, are you following? All of you? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Uh, yes. Next, yes. One, alhamdulillah. Next one is social. So these people came from social media. Facebook, YouTube. You can also know what kind of social media they came from? So let's go to the source and medium. Ah, here, for example, all the organic came from which kind of search? Huh? Google. 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 They searched for us on Google, and they found us, and they just came. So that's a organic search. And here, social media. From where did they all come? Huh? Huh? Uh, Facebook. 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 Exactly. Facebook, because we had a small campaign with Doha family actually on Facebook, and this is from where they came. Tamam? They came from Facebook. It was very interesting to see 
how even look at the details you can get from Google Analytics. So if you have a campaign that's running, the best way to monitor it is through Google Analytics. Here, look how many came from mobile. Look at this, my God. Look at this, how many came from mobile versus desktop. Can you see the difference? 90% from huh? mobile. Uh, can you ignore mobile now in your campaign? Um, can you? So, yeah, I mean, it's very important to see uh, people from Spain, uh, people from Qatar, and, and, and so on. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, most of them, when they access our, our website, where did they go? Huh? Where did they go? Register. To the registration page. To the registration page to register their kids. And, and, and so on. So this is so interesting. You see here the kinds of behavior, overview of the behavior of your consumers, returning versus uh, current. Yani, a very insightful, by the way, Google Analytics, very, you have to include this in your projects. In your projects, you have to include Google Analytics. Okay, you have to include Google Analytics. You have to include it as part of your evaluation in your campaign. How are you going to be evaluating your online digital media? Through Google Analytics. It's extremely essential to include uh, that. Halas. So I showed you now live to see what the landing page and to see how you should monitor the landing page, how can you evaluate the landing page through Google Analytics. Let me just wrap it up to make sure that you understand all of you because this is going to be the first thing in the first week of your project. If you if you check out my dear students, the last projects, your previous projects, you'll find your colleagues in the first week the first thing they do is design and launching of landing page. You have to have a landing page because everything online will go into the landing page. So I can understand if I'm doing well or no. Just to explain things and to make sure it's clear, this is what we call landing page. And here I'm going to write example my web sites. It's clear. Okay. What's happening? But let me. Further elaborate. I'm going to have, for example, here an ad in Qatar Living. Halas and click, and I go to the landing page. I'm going to have here an ad on Instagram. I click and I go to my website, which is my landing page I chose. I'm going to have another ad on Facebook, for example. I will have an ad on Google Ads, Google, uh, on YouTube. This is how you should be doing designing your uh, oops I'm sorry I, I took it off by mistake but I was going to write yeah, around it the uh, YouTube uh, Google Ads Instagram Qatar Living Display Ad and, and so on is this clear? Is this clear? Khalas, everything is okay you understand now what you're going to be doing in your first week of your campaigns in terms of uh, launching your landing page and uh, deciding what it is and so on and through this, you're going to save and the evaluation of your campaign. Well, I love to, we're going to be using Google Analytics to monitor the uh, campaign uh, and landing page and see whether we are performing well or no, whether we need to make some changes and, and, and so on. That's very important point to understand how to run digital. Campaign. This is how digital campaigns are run. Okay, This is how you're capable of knowing instantly if you are doing well or no. If there's something wrong, you go and you change it and you amend it and so on. Here, for example, very interesting study I found online. Uh, MasterCard did this study, and it's in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, and Lebanon, uh, Middle East only. The behavior of people online in terms of top three spending categories, in terms of uh, how much, look, 85% access to internet using their mobile. Uh, one in three made a purchase from their mobile during the last three months. Uh, more than half prefer to shop from local websites rather than Foreign words, very interesting questions to understand the behavior of people online in the Middle East. So I like the study. I thought to share it with you in, in this infographic. Have a look at it, yeah. It's very interesting to see. Uh, characteristics of e-commerce sites. Very important that to include all these things. If you're going to make, if you want to buy, sell your product online, you have to include these things. Very important. You have to make sure you include all this. Okay. So it's very important. If you have a website, Really consider all this in your website. Make sure all this is included in your website somewhere, some way or another. Nice also a figure I got, the map. Uh, technology will profoundly change the shopping experience by 2020. I think this has already happened now. 
in 2021. It's very interesting to see how it's happening. Interactive signage. What in store technology innovation do you anticipate being? This is a question that asked the consumer. Because what in store uh, technology innovations do you anticipate being, being in store by 2020? Look at the right things that people wrote. Things that we know about, things we don't know about. I like the smart sitting room here. I would like to see how the, <laughs> it is going to be in the heavy in store. Smart personalized in store messaging. Yes, I have the Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, doctor, but I have to go for something. Is that okay? It's okay. It's not okay. Let's see. What can I say? It's okay. Up to you. Sorry, about it. I have almost done yet. Uh, successful e-commerce, uh, yani, uh, moving on bad, it starts to take you step by step into all the different strategies that you should be including if you're going to be selling your uh, products online. Uh, طبعا, very important to, to have online uh, online versus offline integration. That's extremely important. Now, many stores are doing this, by the way. In Qatar, it's very much with this on Instagram. At even the big mega stores, for example, Home Center, Center Point, these big stores in Qatar, they are selling online as well. They are providing offers online. They are knowing this is the future. After Corona, a lot of people have reconsidered their business model. After Corona, people have reconsidered and revised their business models to stay online, although even Corona is going to go, but still they said, oh, even if Corona is going to go, why don't we stay online with the offline? Because this is the future. Amazon.com, they have anticipated this long time ago, and this is why they are market leaders. Um, interesting also, how many of you go into a site and you buy things and you put it in a shopping cart and then you leave it and go and you don't buy it? I'm one who does that, by the way. Uh, I do it a lot in Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> right, you go. So... What should you do, but this is very important. Sellers online should do what we call uh, uh, kinds of cyber bait. Yeah, they should give added incentives, added financial incentives, added convenience incentives for the consumers. Like this site, very interesting to see how they have provided uh, incentives for their consumers to uh, uh, yani, uh, stay online and buy their products and, and so on. They made them some sort of offers and, and things that they can do online so that they motivate them to stay online and to buy and not to abandon their shopping carts and so on. Um, moving on, of course, definitely privacy and security issues is a big issue. Now there is on websites, you'll find there's a specific icon on the website that show that it, you can buy uh, online from it safely, by the way. And there is, I don't know, there's a specific like uh, uh, trademark or icon in the bottom of uh, the stores of the sorry the site if you find it that means that this site is reliable and you can buy from it online and provide your your, your credit card information and so on mobile marketing and yeah, smartphones 44 percent so i would say it's more than 60 or 70 percent now i think this is all better really from what we see now it's much more than that so please make sure that you integrate and include mobile phones uh, in your campaign. What kind of things you can do on mobile phones? Look at this, display ad, search ad, video advertising, QR codes, scan the code, go somewhere, geotargeting. Geotargeting now is very common in Qatar, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Many times I go to shopping malls, and when I enter the mall, I find SMSs coming to me from the stores inside the mall about the offers in the store, inside the mall. The one they, can, they know that you're in the, 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 diameter, the, the parameter from your GPS. If it's on, very interesting. And this is what we call geo marketing, the geo targeting, and it really it happens in Qatar, by the way. It's available. Many stores do it in Qatar. You know? In app advertising, in app advertising is very common now. Mobile apps is becoming a trend. Mobile app, basically anything now has a mobile app. It's becoming a big trend. And I think it's obvious here yeah, for most of us. Yeah, we see it. Uh, on action codes and magazines, you can read this on your own page. Yeah. We're going to stop here. Tomorrow. We're going to talk about digital marketing, and this is the last thing we're going to be talking about in this chapter, which is digital marketing strategies. What can we do online? Uh, yeah, I mean, what can we do online? How can we benefit from different uh, outlets and different uh, strategies and tools uh, online uh, from interactive marketing to content marketing? We're going to stop on content marketing, which is the most essential one, actually, and the most challenging one. You have to keep your content updated. You have to have a content calendar. 
campaign, if you are going to be running your campaign for one month, for example, in your situation, you have to have a content calendar for me. Tell Dr. Wallahi, in the first week, we will stress on this, we will do this, we will post about this. In the second week, we will do this, we will put in the third week, in the fourth week, yani, how the data will develop and how will it go with the other components and complement the other components of the campaign. Yani, content marketing, some and many big brands, they hire people specifically just for running their content. To be current, to be accurate, to be timely, to be relevant to the target market. Very important to the campaign. Tamam? So we will stop here. Inshallah, inshallah, we continue on that.